Hello and welcome to my video. This video is all about tax savings. The video is part of a series of videos, so if you would like more content like this, then please consider subscribing to the channel. And also it really helps me if you press that like button. So my video about tax savings. Now this is mainly concentrating on tax savings for small businesses and directors of small businesses and the self-employed. But before I start with the tax savings, I just want to cover the recent government help just to, to make sure that, uh, that it's, it's really clear what is taxable and what is not taxable. So anything that was a grant is taxable and anything that was a loan is not taxable. So the grants, which are the furloughed money, the self-employed grant, the £10,000 that people have received, all those are grants and they will be taxable. Now, generally, people have got an expense relating to that grant item, so there is no tax to pay, but I think it needs to be clear that there is, it is a taxable, uh, taxable income. So moving back to tax savings. Now, this is a long list, so I'm going to rattle through them. And if there is something that you know pricks your, pricks your interest, then maybe you want to ask me or you want to do some research on it to, to get the full details on it. But I'm going to start with pensions. So pensions are probably the biggest thing that people do to save tax. They're particularly good for high rate taxpayers. And the way that a pension scheme works is that you put the money, put income into your pension now and it's taxed when you take the money out, when you're 55, 57 or older, um, then you can, you can defer that tax payment. And very often people who are high rate taxpayers now are gonna be basic rate taxpayers when they retire. So therefore they're hugely reducing their tax bills. And pensions also sort of work like a family trust fund. You're getting 25% tax free lump sum and you're restricted to putting £40,000 a year in, which there is some backdating, but £40,000 a year for most people. Um, so that's substantial amounts of money. And for a husband and wife, that's £80,000 um, a year. So that's a lot of money you can put in and shelter from tax. I mean, the, the main disadvantage is that once it's in a pension fund, it's in a pension fund um, and uh, you can't spend the money now, uh, obviously. So that's, that's a disadvantage if you do need to spend the money now. ISAs, so ISAs are where you put money, the tax money into an ISA, and then it's sheltered from tax. Put 20,000 pounds each in, so for a husband and wife, 40,000 um, pounds, and then it's sheltered from, from tax, so capital gains tax and any particularly higher rate income tax. That's really good. I just have a caveat on both of these. They're both predominantly um, invest in, finan in financial assets. Now for my pension, I don't actually invest in financial assets. I've mostly got properties um, and commercial properties. However, there is an emphasis on financial assets and I just have to do a warning on financial assets because just think about this, so that there's an underlying, one of the most important parts of financial assets is the bond market, so the government debt market. And in Europe, all over Europe, and starting in the UK, we now have negative interest rates. So what do negative interest rates mean? What they mean is that you lend money to the government, you know, to, for 10 years, you lend the government money for 10 years, and then at the end of that 10 years, they give you back less than you paid them in the first place, than, the, than you gave them in the first place. So you, you gave them a thousand pounds and they're giving you back 900 pounds. But that 900 pounds doesn't buy as much in 10 years time. So it might buy six or 700 pounds, maybe 750 pounds. So you're giving somebody some money for 10 years and at the end of it, you're getting substantially less in, certainly in terms of purchasing power than you had at the beginning. It's all topsy-turvy. And I think a market that's giving signals, bizarre pricing signals like that, is one that you should be extremely cautious about. And personally, I don't like financial assets for that very reason, because I don't trust it. But I don't know why the markets are giving ridiculous uh, signals, but I know they are, and therefore I feel nervous about it. And I think you should, although, Financial assets could increase in value. This is not, you know, you need to look at your own circumstances. This isn't a detailed financial advice. 
but just be careful, please. Isis, Lisa, Lysas, um, this is lifetime saving schemes where you put the money into the Lysa and then you, the government tops it up with a basic rate tax. Um, you've got to be young, well, young, under 40, is that young? But you've got to be young enough to receive them so people my age are slightly less interested in them. Uh, but they they can be really useful for because um, you, you can do two things with them. You can either re reach the age of sixty and take the money, or you can uh, buy your first house with them. Now, if you've got young adult children, then and you sort of want to help them with their, buying their first house, then they can be a really good way of doing that. So if you put a few thousand pounds in every year, um, the, the government increases that. Um, and therefore you, you're getting a boost to what you're doing to help your children buy a house. So it can be quite good for that. Personal allowances, you want to use your personal allowances because that's tax-free money. So everybody gets a personal allowance. So, you know, you do, your spouse does, and actually all your children um, get, get personal allowances. You know, your parents get the personal allowances. Everybody gets a personal allowance. You don't have to be an adult even. However, I mean, you, you've got to be a little bit careful because I can't give money to a minor child and then it, that money counts as their income. They thought of that. But a grandparent can give money to their grandchild and, and the income from that money then does count as their income. This can be really, this can be useful. Um, it can be useful if you've got young adult, uh, uh, young, young adult children and you're paying for universities and that sort of thing because um, you can use the income if you've got an asset that you trust them with, young adults at university. If you do, um, um, you, you brought them up properly. Um, well done. Um, and, um, uh, and you can get them to have their own income. So the money that you give them to support them while they're at university goes through their tax return and not your tax return. And therefore you might be able to avoid higher rate tax on that doesn't really work for basic rate taxpayers because you're only paying the same tax anyway. Expenses, so business expenses, always important. Um, the overall rule is wholly and exclusively. If something's wholly and exclusive for business, then it's claimable, and if it's not, it's not. Um, we've always got to remember with expenses that the more expenses we have, the lower our tax bill, but the more expenses we have, the lower our profit, so we can borrow less. That can be important. Um, I just want to raise two things on expenses. There's, there's a lot you could, I could, I could do hours on expenses just on their own. However, life cover, if you, if you, you know, particularly in the circumstances we're in at the moment, if you want to buy life cover, you can put it through your company, your limited company. Um, it's an allowable expense in the company. And, um, and then, uh, and then the benefit should you die, well, benefit doesn't go to you. It goes to, you, to those that you love. Um, and that and that benefit is paid tax free. There is a particular way you need to set it up, but it is possible. And there is a, a increasing interest interest in electric cars, so the they can be really good for tax at the moment. Um, depends whether you want an electric car, I guess. Uh, but increasingly, people do, and uh, we have a few clients in London. They're very excited about it. Um, so maybe if London doing it now, then it will get to. Uh, get to Manchester in a few years time, dare I say, controversial that. R&D, um, R&D is a major way that some companies save tax. So R&D is research and development. Now, no small businesses do research at time, that's why code stuff, research, no. Development, yes. So that's developing technology to use it in your business. It doesn't have to be uh, new, it just needs to be new to you. It's, it's not second hand, it's just new to you. Um, and you're developing your business through technology particularly. Uh, we have a lot of, well, a lot, a number of clients that are former taxpayers that don't pay corporation tax because they can work out that they've got development expenditure. The way, ba ba basically, it, the way that it works, you've got £10,000 of development expenditure then it counts as £22,500 of expenses in your accounts, and therefore your, your uh, taxable profit can fall and fall very substantially and fall to naught sometimes in, in quite a lot of cases, but uh, in many cases. And, and if you're loss making, uh, you can actually get a third of the expenditure back. So, so it's, it's they're really good, but, uh, but you have to be the right sort of business to be able to do it, and you do have to be a limited company. Um, sole trader v limited. So this is uh, something that the government over a number of budgets have made closer. But still, there is an advantage in having a limited company. Um, 
with the national insurance and the dividend tax, if you include it all, then a sole trader pays 29% tax and a limited company you pay 25.1% tax. So it's a little bit of a tax saving, but normally, you know, because there's more admin to do if you're in a limited company, so a lot of that you actually pay to the accountant, which is great for me, um, but we don't really want to do work unless it gives you value. So, um, so for if you're if you earn sort of twenty thousand pounds, thirty thousand pounds, it's not so worthwhile. If you those four percent difference add up, so the more trade you've got going through the through the through the company, the more profit you've got, then the more they add up. There is a cash flow because you pay your taxes later in a in a limited company, um, and uh, if you're a high rate taxpayer, it's loads better to be a limited company because. The tax is tax. The principal tax is corporation tax, which is paid before you receive the money. So there's actually a there's a you have to do the sums, but there's a net to gross thing going on, which means you can sneak through um, an extra eight eighty nine thousand pounds before you pay um, high rate tax. So if you're if you're up against the limit, then that can really help. Um, and also in a limited company, you choose when the income becomes your personal income. Which, so you choose whether you pay a high rate tax and that can be very advantageous because then you can plan your pensions and you can do a whole lot of planning um, and you can make that choice. So that can be helpful. So that's limited company, be sell trade. Limited company for property. If you've got a few properties, you probably want them in a limited company if you're a high rate taxpayer with your main income. Um, getting it into a limited company can be a faff. So I've never actually seen anybody where an existing portfolio has gone into a limited company because you've got to get all the mortgages, the line, you've got to do a conveyance and and who knows, by the time you've done all of that, they'll have changed the rules. So, so but in a limited company, you can get all your income tax, uh, tax free. You don't have to pay um, higher rate tax unless you choose to. Um, and these are some substantial, uh, substantial benefits. Uh, it's probably not worth it for one or two, maybe two. It depends, it depends on your own tax, tax position, of course. Um, inheritance tax. Inheritance tax is largely a voluntary tax. Obviously, you don't pay inheritance tax. Your children do. So, so you've got a you, you, you can decide whether you want them to pay it or not. But there are some big get outs that you know, there's a seven year rule. So if you give money and then live seven years, you don't have to pay it. There's a, there's, there's a big allowance. There's a business property that has special rules. There's a whole load um, and it is voluntary. But I just wonder, I just think that with all the government spending that is going on at the moment, I don't think they'll increase the main rates of tax very much. They might, they might do a bit. They might increase dividend tax from seven and a half to 10%. They might do that. They might increase national insurance by a percentage or two, they might do that. But I don't think they'll increase it. I don't think it'll be, no, that's not equivalent to the amount of spending that's going on at the moment, nowhere near. But I do wonder if some of the marginal taxes like uh, that get to go under the radar, they're not quite so much in people's faces, uh, whether they will increase inheritance tax. And I do think that maybe before the next budget, you just want to get your, get your planning done and get your ducks in a row if you do have an inheritance tax problem. Obviously, as I say, you don't have it. Your children have the inheritance tax problem. May hey, maybe you've got parents and you worry. <laughs> Whatever. Um, EIS and CDIS. So most people who know about these know about them because they use them, and people who don't don't. Um, but this is a way in which you get tax relief on money that you invest in in emerging businesses. So these are these are. Quite in their earlier stages, very often loss making, um, and you get um, twenty or uh, thirty or fifty percent of the money you've invested back as a as an income tax reducer, um, and there's also there are other benefits as capital gains tax benefits, and if there's a benefit as well if you lose all all your money, but but that is the problem. Um, you can you, they're great for tax, but if you lose all your money, then you're not up on the deal. So, um, so that I think that's uh, it's a specialist um, area, I would say, of, of investing. So there you are. I've rattled through the main areas in which people save tax. Well done for listening this far. 
you're obviously interested, so you might want to subscribe to the channel. And if you've got this far, you might want also to like it um, because that really helps me. Thank you.